other things I want to talk to you about is uh, we're talking about these companies and one of the most polarizing company, the most polarizing company in the solar space is uh, Power. Um, and you either love it or you hate it. And before we get into it, I want to clarify, like we're not, I'm not using this conversation to promote power. I disclaimer, I am a member of power. Um, I, I see that there's a lot of positive and negatives. I'm not opening the conversation because I want you to bash power. I just want to have a conversation about what your experience was like, what my experience is like, and try to give, um, uh, some like have a reasonable conversation. Cause I think there's way too much hate and there's also way too much just shameless promotion there. there we have to kind of have a conversation about what's good and what's bad about it. So you were a member of power. Uh, what was your experience like? And, uh, just, Give us a little feedback about that. Yeah. So um, I was on the power platform, but I wasn't necessarily with power. And so I haven't actually put a single deal through them. I've recruited, sorry, I recruited and coached quite a few people that happen to be with power and uh, their experience wasn't very good. Uh, I know a lot oh, of people explain that, that to do me. When you say their experience wasn't very good. Uh, what was wrong with their experience? A multitude of things, but uh, I think Power is a fantastic platform. I think that it's helped out quite a few people. I think that it's put a ton of food on people's tables so they could provide for their family, and that and the most important is mo the most important thing to me is that they're able to uh, they are able to generate money for their family and and sell solar. Now, with that being said, the the downside from the other people that I've heard that have had a native native experience is exactly what you're talking about is lack of training. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of it has to do that. It's a, it's a platform, right? So it's not a company that you work for. It's not like going to Best Buy and they're going to give you training. It's a platform. And so they give you the tools necessary to be excellent. But a lot of people expect you to have like an actual mentor, like somebody that is actually going to go out there with you. Some people have it. Some people don't, right? Um, either you have a mentor that's in the field with you, or you have one that's virtual that just happened to recruit you. And so I, I think that is one of the negatives about power is that anybody can really call themselves a mentor and it doesn't take too much to really build a team on the platform. Uh, as long as you recruit and people can go sell solar to their family and friends, you're going to get some deals, you're going to make money. The negative side of it is that there's not a lot of checks and balances when it comes to the mentors managing the projects because they're not allowed to, right? And so there's specific project managers that handle the projects for the reps, and that sometimes gets a little dicey. So there's a couple, you know, things that could happen with your client that you may not be aware of. And to go try to figure that out, there's going to be a lot more checks and balances that you're going to have to take on personally, which you should anyway. Um, but there's just a lot to it. You know, you need to actually already probably be a solar sales rep before you join their platform, just to be able to have some success and know that everything's getting done correctly. Yeah, I 100% agree with everything that you said. I, as I said, I'm a member of Power. I thought I was never going to be in a multi-level marketing company. Anyone who says, oh, Power is not multi-level marketing. Well, yes, it is. But when I looked at the model, like it's it's a really, really great setup and structure. Like it makes a lot of sense if everything is fine tuned and working properly. And then, but when you actually get into how things work in reality, when you're onboarding as many reps as they are, and you don't necessarily have like that training that you talked about hands on, um, there is a lot of bridges that they need to cross before they're like before they become uh, the best company in solar or whatever. I, I know they say they're the fastest growing company in solar, um, whatever it is that they say. But yeah, for sure the uh, operation side is is rough. It's not, it's not as, um, not, not being able to have that hands-on um, project management that you get with other companies is very, um, I mean, in a way for a solar pro, it's almost scary because you know how many little things that can go wrong and how a lack of communication can break a deal. You can lose a deal just because someone didn't tell someone else that this was supposed to happen two weeks ago and now the deal's lost. And that the more people that you get in that process, the more likely that's going to be to happen. But yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely an, an interesting an interesting platform. And I, I think one of the biggest red flags I tell anyone is, especially when you're looking at any type of multi-level marketing companies. I'm not a fan of people in companies that spend more time recruiting than they spend selling. And so that's kind of my whole thought process is with it. I was like, yeah, I use the platform. I'm on there, but I am not necessarily looking to build the biggest team. I'd rather have a team of people that I know that I trust that I can really work with and provide to and give them the resources that they need so that they can be successful. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it gets a, a really bad rap in the groups and there's a lot of, uh, 
truth behind the reasons that they were. It's funny. You're actually, the only reason I'm having this conversation with you is because I was supposed to have this conversation with Andrew Weiss. And as I was telling you right before we went on is, uh, it's hard to have a conversation with that guy because he's either posting memes or driving like 24. I know, no, he has dinner too. He takes pictures of his dinners. So he takes pictures of his dinners. He's making and posting memes and he's driving like 24 seven. That guy is <laughs> and still running his company somehow. Um, but because you're on here, I wanted to talk to you about that, get your experience. So, so thank you for sharing. Cause I think there is a lot of good. Um, but I also think there's a lot of bad, um, especially when you start targeting and marketing to those, uh, potential reps that don't have experience in the industry. And if you have someone that doesn't have experience in the industry and they're going into this, you better provide them with a lot of mentoring, a lot of training, and otherwise it's, it's not going to be good for them or for the customers. 100%, man. I mean, you know, just as well as I do is that go solo has its issues, right? So, I mean, if you're just generating, Oh, you don't say (laughs) weren't they they, they down for like what, four days, three days last week. Um, yeah, but I mean, dude, when you when you're the fastest growing company and you have everybody hanging and banging proposals through Go Solo, and you're just like praying for something to get sold, you know what I mean? It's gonna get bogged down. Like yeah. Go Solo can't keep up with it. But that's that's another thing is that you're in a wild, wild west industry. Everything's brand new. You got to break it to fix it, right? And so I don't want to talk bad about uh, power. Like most of the memes that you see are actually native of me. You know, and so that's that's kind of my uh, that's my great Gatsby, right? So that's what's funny about it is that a lot of people they see those memes and they get so offended by it, but it's number one comedy, and number two they're true. You know, like I created a whole entire Instagram about door knocking and created memes off of it. I've kind of let it die a little bit, but you know, originally that that was what it was for is like people who understand our industry. Number one, they understand the comedy behind like what it is, right? And you know, just as well as I do, is that power is no better than any other solar company and any other solar company, not better than power. Like yeah. everybody has their shit. Everybody has their issues. 80, everybody has their problems. 80% problem. of the problems that people get on power for are throughout here oh, and there with every single company. It's just the only oh. issue. The only reason that power gets so much attention is probably because power is the loudest in the space and because yeah. power, well, power is the loudest because of their model or whatever, the recruiting and the multi level. They're also right. huge. You know, they, they have probably like 70% of solar experts like they have 70 percent of the people that actually sell solar i'd imagine i don't know what the statistic is i don't know what the number is but i bet it's pretty high i i I bet so too and uh i i also think that people i think power is here to stay and i think if you're not if you think power is going to fade into darkness i i think you're you're in for a rude awakening but that doesn't mean that power is going to be the the number one company or it doesn't mean that the other all the the traditional is going to i think there's i think competition is always good so um that's enough yeah i I don't i think jonathan bud he put himself in a position where it's not just a broker model it's not just a platform but it's also a sales organization so if they need to transverse with one installer directly i think they'd be able to do that and they'd probably get paid handsomely to do so they'd get bought out just like vivid sunrun yeah and that's an entrepreneurial perspective that's probably the end goal um yeah 100 yeah, he wants to he wants to cash his check and get out, man. If they pay him five hundred million and say go away, he will. <laughs> <laughs> imagine saying no to getting paid. Like if someone if you were working your ass off for five, ten years, imagine someone coming up to you and saying, I'll give you five hundred million dollars, you can just go away. Yeah. You just have to stop working. And imagine getting that offer and saying, Nah, you know, I'm good. That's a... Uh, that's um, some that's some serious uh, purpose and mission that you must have or vision or like future goals and uh, discipline to not just say yes and grab your bag and go home, which I know that kind of both of us, we, we kind of have uh, some end goals of uh, getting our bag one day and uh, maybe quitting the rat race. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an interesting, I just, it's weird that I feel like the division between it has become so real recently. And what's funny is it, it did come from memes and memes are funny, they're jokes, and we all should be able to poke fun at ourselves, our company, or any other company in the space and not take it too seriously. Well, they're um, going to welcome it, right? Like any, any other thing in life is that there's good and bad. And both of those things create a lot of fire behind the brand. So if you happen to be talking positive about it, if you happen to be talking negative about it, whatever the case may be, you're going to have the people where if you're talking bad about it, they're going to go build it better. If you yeah. have people that are talking good about it, they're going to leave and they're going to go find out that it's not as good as on the other side of the fence as they thought it was going to be because now you're still not getting trained. You're still not getting the tools. You're still not getting anything. So congratulations. It's the same thing. You're just not part of a bigger brand, right? 
And so that, that falls a lot on the person. So back to what I was talking about within the power platform is it's a lot of responsibility on the individual. You have to go out of your way to train yourself. You have to go out of your way to make sure that you're on those Zoom meetings. You have to make sure that you're going out of your way to talk to people outside of your mentorship. You have to make sure that you're going out of your way to learn how to build your skill set within the industry. And that's what I mean by don't join a company where you're already great. Like if you're going into sales, go find somebody and have them teach you how to be a lead gen specialist because then you're going to be able to cut costs and generate your own leads. That way you don't have to go pay a $3,000 retainer and pay a bunch of ad, ad spend through somebody else when you can do it cheaper yourself. So that's that's kind of what I mean by like, try to find other people that are going to be able to sharpen your spear on the sides that you're not sharp. So if it happens to be on training or if it happens to be on recruiting, go do that. That way you can be an all around expert. That way when you show up as a salesperson, you know everything. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm a marketer. I'm here to earn your business, go barbecue some broths with you and drink some beers. If that sounds great, we can make that happen. And it's going to save you a ton of cash. I'm not here to sell you solar though. I love that, right? So that's, yeah, that's marketers, you know, marketers and those retainers, marketers are the worst. I tell you, I tell this all the time, man. We're, we're uh, lead gen guys are, they're so annoying. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. And, but even then, are you a good recruiter? You know what I mean? Can you yeah. go out there and actually show people like, hey, man, come join our company. And they're like, why? Show me your check. And they're like, well, I haven't got paid yet, but I promise you it's going to be a good thing. And they're like, so like... You Remember, got everyone paid, only cares about what's in it for me, right? So right. If you're talking to them and you're telling about how your company is so great uh, and you're talking about why they join your team and like, I'm the best at this, this, and this, then you're not, you're having the wrong approach to begin with. Um, and kind of going back to what you also said is especially, especially for joining a platform like power, you got to think about the person that you're, whoever your mentor is, whoever your, whoever team you're joining. Cause that's a very important choice that a lot of people who join that platform maybe don't necessarily think about. They're just like, Oh, I, you know, so-and-so wanted me on their team. I'm going to join their team. Okay. Are they someone that is able to provide you training? Are they someone that has that experience? Or are they just someone who messaged you a link and they started talking to you? Um, because especially with that, like you're, you're the person you choose as your mentor is, is, is super important. Wow. Thank you so much for making it to the end. That means you're one of the very few, one of the dozens of our biggest supporters, which in this case really just means maybe you're just the people that didn't hate it, um, but still I greatly appreciate it. While you're still here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below, leave your thoughts, um, and we would greatly appreciate it because it's gonna help our channel to grow um, and to become uh, bigger so that we can help more and more solar pros to grow their business. So once again, thank you. Um, make sure to stick around and we look forward to creating more content for you very soon.